Well, that's just annoying. I was hoping that I was going to get to see the Broncos play Russell Wilson in week two when we play the Steelers, but apparently Russell Wilson still having some calf soreness. You know what? It is what it is. We're moving on. Now that I don't have to talk about Russell Wilson at all, it's going to be great to just kind of get into the nitty gritty about this game. So let's talk about this Broncos versus Steelers game, shall we? What's going on, friends? It's your boy Derek here, aka Strez, aka everyone's favorite Kansas City based Broncos fan. And I am here with another game preview prediction video about this week two matchup for the Broncos against the Steelers. And at the end of the video, just like every video during the season, we're going to be jumping into our weekly pigskin pick em picks. So stay tuned for the end of the video if you're interested in seeing my picks for the entire NFL. And if you haven't joined that league yet and you want to be a part of that, it's not too late. Just click the link in the description below and you'll be able to join that league. I think we've got like 35 members in the league. It's pretty big um, this year compared to what it was last year, which is really exciting. So if you want to be a part of that, click the link in the description, join the league, start making your picks and see what happens. And if this is your first time seeing my ugly ass face on your screen and you want to support this channel because you think, hey, that guy's got W Riz consider clicking the subscribe button. We're almost at 2000 subscribers, which is absolutely bonkers in my brain because I started this channel like 14 months ago. And the fact that I'm already almost at 2000 subscribers is crazy to me. I never thought that this channel would be anything like this. And I, I would have a community that I've built of other Broncos fans and other NFL fans that are a part of this Broncos Hub community. It's awesome. I love it. Thank you all who have subscribed. And if you want to subscribe, click the subscribe. How many times can I say subscribe before you have to go down there and click the subscribe button? But that's enough of the self-promotion here. I want to jump right into this game because I'm excited to talk about this game because I think there was a lot that we kind of learned about what we can expect from week one from both the Denver Broncos and the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I'm eager to talk about these two teams. The Steelers are coming into this game as three-point favorites as the away team which makes me annoyed. But when I watched last week's game and I understand that we have $53 million in dead cap being held up and the Steelers quarterback, who's actually not even gonna be taking the field this week, it seems to make sense in my brain, at least why we're not favored to win many games at all this season. And the points total is set at 36 and a half points. So people in Vegas don't think this is gonna be a very high scoring affair anyways, which also makes a lot of sense because of the way that these offenses functioned um, in week one. And we'll get into that here. But yeah, like I said, Russell Wilson's not playing. So for the Broncos defense, they get to focus on Justin Fields and what he brings to the Steelers offense, as opposed to what Russell Wilson would bring to that Steelers offense, which is good because we've got tape on Justin Fields from week one in their matchup against the Falcons, which he looked all right in, which is kind of exciting to see. As an Ohio State fan, I always want Justin Fields to succeed, but as a Broncos fan having to play Justin Fields this week, I don't want to see him succeed. So kind of puts me in a weird position. Weird stat for the week for anyone who didn't pay attention to the entire NFL in week one, the Steelers didn't score a single touchdown, but they managed to score 18 points. You do the math. Six field goals. All 18 points came off of field goals. That's crazy. But that just shows that either the Falcons defense is really good, which I don't think that that's the case. I'm not saying that the Falcons defense sucks by any means, but I am saying that I think the Falcons and the Broncos defense are pretty similar in a lot of places. And I think one thing that is still very obvious about Justin Fields is that he is is a great runner. He's the fastest quarterback in the NFL. He's the most explosive running quarterback in the NFL outside of Josh Allen, I would I would say. And so it's going to be important for the Broncos defense to find ways to bottle him up and keep him contained to the pocket and force him to throw the football because when he throws the football, it usually doesn't turn out great for the offense that he's playing for. Granted, he had a relatively efficient week one. He completed 74% of his passes for 156 yards and only took two sacks. For people who have watched Justin Fields' NFL career, those are pretty impressive numbers for him. I mean, only taking two sacks for a guy who was the most sacked quarterback in the NFL last season is a huge improvement for the way Justin Fields plays quarterback. And the fact that he was able to get the ball out to several different receivers and complete seven 74% of his passes is a pretty cool thing to look at. But for the Broncos, they're going to have to find ways to make that number not be as, as efficient as it was. And just like most quarterbacks, it's obvious that Justin Fields has a favorite target. It's George Pickens. This guy is such a fun receiver to watch. The, the catches that he makes, the plays that he makes, the routes that he runs, the way he gets hyped about catches that he makes. Like, George Pickens is fun to watch, but George Pickens is really the only wide receiver on this team that kind of worries me. We just came off of a game where we were matched up against DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Geno Smith did not throw a 
1,000 yards against our defense. Pat Sertan held DK Metcalf to like 30 yards receiving. That's really good. And George Pickens is not as good as DK Metcalf, in my opinion. I might be wrong, but in my opinion, DK Metcalf is a much better receiver, much bigger body than George Pickens. If Pat Sertan is going to follow their best receiver around the field like he should do every game this season, he's going to be following George Pickens all over the field and in I don't think George Pickens is going to touch the football this game. So that just kind of leaves it up to the other corners, Riley Moss, Jaquan McMillan, making sure that they take care of business on the other guys that are more role players in that wide receiver core. They both played really well against Jackson Smith and Jigba and Tyler Lockett. Like Ry Riley Moss really surprised me in his first game as a starting cornerback in the NFL. Like it was actually pretty comforting to see how he played after I kind of sat back and rewatched the game, watched some of the all 22 footage. Riley Moss played a really solid game. So that's exciting to see that maybe the other side of the field is taken care of from wherever Pat Sertan is. There's something in my brain that makes me think that this is one of those games that's going to be difficult for us to handle the tight end. Now, Pat Fryermuth is not gonna be blowing anyone away with his production or his fantasy points. He's not that kind of tight end. He's not George Kittle. He's not Travis Kelsey. He's not Sam Laporta. He's not one of the best tight ends in the league, but I just have this weird, suspicious feeling that this is one of those games that he is gonna have one of his best games of the season because that seems to happen when the Broncos defense lines up against different people. I literally don't have any basis for that opinion or that belief. I just kind of have this feeling that that is the case. I think that Firemuth is gonna have like 70 yards receiving against us and it's gonna piss me off. But if you look at this past chart of Justin Fields week one game, you'll notice that Justin Fields didn't really throw any passes between the hash marks. None of his passes were over the middle of the field. They were all kind of on the outside near the numbers outside of the hashes, which is a really interesting thing when you look at the way that the Broncos can handle this game defensively. And if you have any sort of football knowledge at all, you'll probably be able to sit back and say, oh, the Broncos should just play one high safety and not two. They should stack the box and really just sell out to stop the run. And if you're someone who says that, I 100% agree with you. If Justin Fields wants to challenge Pat Sertan, Jaquan McMillan, and Riley Moss on the outside, that is completely fine with me. If he's not going to throw anything over the middle of the field, there is no reason for the Broncos to not stack the box, put eight guys in the box, man up on the outside, have one high safety, and do everything that they can to slow Najee Harris and Justin Fields down in the run game. Like that just makes too much sense to me. It's almost too obvious which kind of makes me think that this might be a trap. But also, I'm not the Broncos defensive coordinator, so it doesn't really matter what I think, right? Against this offense, I think that the biggest thing that the Broncos need to do is sell out to stop the run and force freaking turnovers, dude. We started out the game last week with a sack and an interception in the first two plays. Can we get more of that this week? I would love to see it. More tackles for loss, more pressure on the quarterback, more run stopping up the middle. Like this just has the opportunity for us to kind of really firm up our run defense, and I'm kind of excited to see what we're able to do against the Steelers' run game. But as far as the Steelers' defense, dude, this defense is insane. How in the hell did the Broncos pull a schedule where they have to play a Mike McDonald defense week one, they have to go play the Steelers and TJ Watt in week two, and then week three and week four, they still have to play the Buccaneers and the Jets. What the hell, ha what did we do to deserve to have to play these kinds of defenses with a rookie quarterback and a lack of playmakers on the outside. It's John Elway. I'm blaming John Elway. John Elway cursed this team and now we're getting bad schedule luck. It's just the way that it is. The Broncos have to account for TJ Watt every single snap. If you go back and watch his week one game, TJ Watt was a freaking monster. Yeah, there were plays where he was offsides, which I don't know if he actually was, Kind of like the Von Miller case where he looks like he's offsides almost every single snap, when in reality, he's just getting a really good jump on the football. So every time the Broncos approach the line of scrimmage on offense, Bo Nix and every person on the offensive line needs to identify where 90 is and make sure that we've got an answer for him. Whether it's double teaming him, sending a running back to help, sending a tight end to help, something to slow him down after the snap. And luckily, this game is a home game, so this gives Bo Nix the opportunity to kind of mess with his snap count a little bit, try to slow TJ Watt down from getting a jump on the ball by using different snap counts 
different cadences, making it difficult for TJ Watt to time the snap so that he doesn't get a clean get off and so that Mike McGlinchey and Garrett Bowles, if Garrett Bowles is healthy, I'm not entirely sure what his status is for this game, to make sure that they both are able to get off the ball in time to slow him down and when they have to send the running back over to chip him, chip him with a tight end, double team him with either Ben Powers or Quinn Miners on the inside. Like whatever they have to do, they have to slow TJ Watt down. And still they have guys on the inside on their defensive line too. Like it is still crazy to me that Cam Hayward is being as effective as he is in the league still. This dude was an Ohio State Buckeye in the late 2000s. He's been in the league for so long and yet he is still messing things up and mucking things up in the middle of the defensive line for the Steelers. So we still have to account for the inside defensive line when we're playing against this Steelers team. There's a bunch of really strange stats from the Broncos week one game against the Seahawks offensively. But one of those stats is the fact that Bo Nix dropped back more than 50 times. He took two sacks. He scrambled several other times. But the fact that we're having our rookie quarterback drop back 50 times in his first NFL game is actually crazy to me. I don't know what Sean Payton was thinking. I'm not gonna question Sean Payton yet. A lot of you are out on Sean Payton. I'm not entirely there yet, but I do have to question why he would have Bo Nix drop back 50 plus times in his first NFL game and not attempt to run the football. That's just crazy to me. And so if that trend continues in this next game against this Steelers defensive line, Bo Nix might die. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but it might not be pretty if TJ Watt gets 50 pass rush snaps against this Broncos rookie quarterback. Yes, Bo Nix is quick. Yes, Bo Nix can avoid problems and pressures in the backfield. Yes, Bo Nix can scramble and get out and make plays with his feet, but you're playing with fire if you're giving TJ Watt that many opportunities to rush the passer. That's just an insane way to go about business if you're calling an offense for any team playing against the Steelers. It's just crazy town. And I'm not saying that I don't think that our tackles can take care of business. That's not what I'm saying. I think Mike McGlinchey played a really solid first game. Garrett Bowles also, but again, I don't know if he's gonna be healthy for this game. I just think that it would be smart for the Broncos to maybe commit to running the football and leaning on the guys that we have in the backfield. We have to be better on first down. If we wanna sustain drives, we have got to be better on first down. We can't have second and long, which will turn into third and long, which will turn into a difficult opportunity to convert on third down. We just cannot have bad first downs. So on first down, we have to make sure that we're getting three plus yards and getting ourselves into second, seven, second, six, second, four opportunities as an offense. And that's where we get into the most annoying statistics that I looked at after this game, leading up to the time of me sitting down and recording this video. And it kind of really actually pissed me off when I looked at these numbers. The Broncos running backs had zero yards after contact in week one. I'm gonna say that one again because I don't know if you were paying attention. The Broncos running backs had zero yards after contact in their week one game against the Seattle Seahawks. Zero yards after contact, zero. Basically what that means is when the Broncos running backs got hit, they were tackled. They may have broken a tackle here, a, a tackle there, but they didn't go anywhere after they broke those tackles. They got tackled by the next person that came up to tackle them. Granted, again, they were playing against Mike McDonald defense, a really solid defense, a revamped defense, a defense that I didn't expect to look as good as they actually looked in week one. But the fact that they had zero yards after contact, Javante Williams, zero yards after contact. And then when you look at the wide receivers, they had the worst yards after catch per reception in the entire NFL. 2.6 yards, that was the average yards after catch. That is not good. That is not good. Those two numbers alone are a death sentence for a rookie quarterback. If you can't get anyone on your offense to actually go out and make a play, make someone miss, break a tackle in the open field, get up field, get a first down, try to find an explosive play, that is not going to fare well for your rookie quarterback who is also in an offense that's functioning as though the short passing game is an extension of the run game. When you do that, and that's kind of what your offense looks like, you run RPO, you've got quick slants, you've got quick outs, those are an extension of the run game. Those guys have to break tackles. Those guys have to make people miss. Those guys have to go out and make a play. And they just didn't do that in week one. So they have to fix that 
if they want to do any sort of damage offensively against this really, really, really solid Steelers defense. So that's really everything that I'm looking for and everything that I think we're looking at going into this game. Obviously, there's probably some more stuff that I've missed, but that leads me to the prediction for this game. It's a mid-afternoon kickoff for this game, and like I said, the Steelers are three-point favorites, and the over-under is 36 and a half points, and I am not looking forward to this game. I know when I gave my preseason predictions for this team, I had the Broncos winning their first two games, but... After seeing how it looked in week one and kind of seeing these advanced statistics after week one, I'm not that high on the Broncos roster right now. Maybe I'm just foolish. Maybe I'm just getting caught up in the moment, but that $53 million dead cap that we aren't able to use on playmakers for the offense is kind of showing its ugly head. And that kind of just leads me to another Broncos loss in week two. I think that the final score is going to be Broncos 13, Steelers 15, and it's going to not look that great. I hope I'm wrong. Like, obviously, I want the Broncos to win every single game that they go out and play. But if I'm going to be an honest person on YouTube, I cannot just sit here and say, oh, I think the Broncos are going to win 35 to 7 against this Steelers team. Like, that would be crazy talk for me to do something like that. So that's why I'm looking at the Broncos losing this game 13 to 15. I don't know. Let me know what your score prediction for this game is in the comments below. If you're a Steelers fan, do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? I don't know how you guys are feeling about your team at this point in the season either. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's jump into the picks around the entire NFL. Looking here at the Broncos Hub Pickums group, I did not have a good first week. I went 10 and six, but I'm still in 22nd place. Like not a lot of people did that well, except for the people at the very top. 13 and three, 14 and two. You guys are cheaters. I don't believe this. You are cheaters. You have, you're hacking. You have to be. Uh, but yeah, we've got people all the way down this list here. But yeah, let's go ahead and make these picks. Thursday night football, Bills, Dolphins. This one's gonna be a real exciting game. Is this one, this one's in Miami? Dude, that video footage of Tyreek Hill getting arrested is crazy to me. The Bills didn't look good to start the game, but Josh Allen went on a freaking heater at the end of that game. You know what? I'm actually gonna pick the Bills in this one. I don't know. I'm definitely gonna be wrong with that one, but who knows? Cowboys, Saints. Saints looked really good, but I think the Cowboys are still gonna come out on top in this one. Buccaneers at Lions. The Bucks looked really good too, but I still think that the Lions are kind of the team of destiny in the NFC. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I'm gonna take the Lions on this one. Jordan Love didn't tear anything. It is a sprain. They're thinking that he could potentially still play on Sunday. I don't think that that's going to happen. So I think they're going to have to go with Malik Willis. I'm going to take the Colts in this one. Anthony Richardson's just got a freaking cannon for an arm. Jets at Titans. Give me the Jets in this one. They didn't look that bad against the 49ers in Monday Night Football. but So I think that they're going to still be able to go out and beat a really bad Titans team. Niners at Vikings. Give me the Niners in this one. Seahawks at Patriots. Are the Patriots actually good? Are the Seahawks actually good? This one's going to be interesting. 83% of people have picked the Seahawks. I'm going to join them. I'm taking the Seahawks in that one. Giants at Commanders. Give me the Commanders. Jaden Daniels, the rookie, is going to get his first win because the Giants suck. They are so bad. Oh my God. Give me the Chargers over the Panthers. The Panthers are also absolutely not very good. I'm going to take the Jags over the Browns because the Browns might actually be the worst team in football this year, even though they have like one of the best defensive players ever. Give me the Ravens over the Raiders. Raiders are trash as well. Rams are going to probably take this one from the Cardinals, even though the Cardinals looked all right in the first half on Sunday. I don't know that they can carry over against the Rams in this game. I, again, I've picked the Steelers to beat the Broncos, and it looks like 85% of people who have picked also feel the same way. Uh, give me the Chiefs over the Bengals, and then I'm actually gonna take the Texans to beat the Bears in Sunday night football. That's gonna be a fun game to watch. Caleb Williams going out in his second game, two young promising quarterbacks. Um, I just think that the Texans have too many weapons, too much built around their team here for anything to happen with that one. I'm going with the Texans here. And then I'm gonna take the Eagles to beat the Falcons on Monday Night Football. How many points will be scored in this game? Give me 49. I don't even know what the over under is on this one, but there we go. Those are my picks. All right, that's gonna do it for my prediction video. We'll see what happens. Again, like I said, I think the Broncos aren't gonna win this game. It's gonna be 13, 15 Steelers, uh, but I'm hoping that the Broncos look better. I just wanna see progress. We're in a rebuild. I wanna see Bo Nix and this offense just get better week over week, and eventually they will start winning games. But right now, I just don't see that being the case. So I kind of want to tamper my expectations even more. I still think Bo Nix is the guy. I still think Bo Nix is the answer for this team at quarterback. But I don't think that it's going to happen right away. Especially with this gauntlet of defenses that we have to play in our first four weeks. So 
Be patient, Broncos fans. We cannot be out on Bo Nix already. Okay? That's going to do it for this video. I will catch you in the next one. And I'm going to finish this one like I usually do. Let's go Broncos. God bless.